Hello. Hey, Klaus. Yeah, I am here. Let's give it a couple more minutes and see more folks join. Yeah, okay, sure. Hi, Danielle. Thanks for joining. Hello. Oh. Did you change the Zoom link? Chat? Uh, no, it's, it's the same. I don't think it's changed. Hey, all. Hey, Steve. How's it going? Good. Always early morning, Ricardo, right? Yeah, early morning for me. Almost or, end of the day for me, so and, I guess where you are. <laughs> enjoy the end of your day? Yeah, I'm already like having an image in mind of my dinner. <laughs> Excellent. Where, where are you, Daniel? I'm in Berlin. Awesome. So it's um, 5 p.m. here. I'm in uh, U.S. East. Uh, just outside Boston, Massachusetts. Right. Boston. Boston, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was working at A Street for 2015. In, in St State Street, you said? A Street. A Street. Oh, yeah, it's in Boston. Okay. I uh I haven't been to Berlin in many many years but uh it was it was lovely when I was younger that I got a chance to go there. Well, it's more fun in the summer I can tell you that. Sure. <laughs> I just remember the constant tons of uh construction going on in like East Berlin area just rebuilding everything still in like 20 years ago. Still going on. I mean, it's uh, really there's uh, gentrification like everywhere. So, but I guess back then it was different, like even, even more, much more. Sure. Yeah, I think it's probably still happening. Yeah. All right. I think we could get started. I think so. Now it's the four of us. Uh, so today we have Klaus and uh, he'll be talking about X Flame. Uh, Distributed mm. system for intelligent workload. So take it yeah. away. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Yeah, it's here. Yeah. Can I see it? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to uh give a quick in introduction about my recent work about uh uh, uh distributed dig system for some intelligent work and uh, i'm also going to uh give some quick demo about uh, uh how this uh, uh how this system how this the engine uh, engine to work for the uh, for the workload <laughs> now uh for our purpose or for our target i think uh, we are going to uh find some uh, scenario here in the community. Now we have generally for HBC or for AI, we have, AP, uh, we have MP, uh, sorry, we have MPI, something, uh, some, something like that framework. 
But uh, I, from our side is that we found we still have some elastic workload. That means the job or the task didn't depend on each other. So for example, they didn't depend on the all or nothing uh, plug, uh, scheduling policy to run the workload. For example, for some AI workload, we can use a distributed uh, data and provide a parallel workload. So we can run run the task. Uh, run, we can run we can run several rounds of tasks to do the training for this one. And for quant, I think we are going to have several uh, simulation uh, simulation algorithm for the uh, for the war. We are uh, value of risk to do that, such as a Monte Carlo simulation uh, method. And uh, in the web, uh, we also have several uh, scenario about elastic work for the for the crawler. For example, when we try to down, uh, analyze the website of the links and download the uh, information, the task, for example, when we analyze the one site and it didn't depend on the other. Uh, other task for for to analyze the other website and uh, another job is uh, such as the encoder decoder of the such as the video so <clears throat> we will split the video into the different different piece several piece so when we do the encoder or decoder of each piece they are not uh they are not they, they can we can do that uh, parallel instead of you know waiting for the others. We just make sure all of the tasks are finished uh, at the end, that's enough. And uh, another thing is, I think for the sentence is that uh, there are several libraries. We would like to support uh, uh, this library across a different uh, language. So for example, we have a Python client to run some Rask service and uh, just make sure the data is, uh, you know, uh, the data data structure is a match between the two algorithms. So we would like to meet all this uh, requirement from uh from our side. <clears throat> and uh, in Flame, we have uh, uh, this is the overall architect of our uh, of the Flame. On the left side, we have the application client. In this case, we are going to have a, a Flame API. It will pro provide a different language uh, interface for them, such as currently we provide the Python API and the Rust API. So based on this API, we can create the different client. For example, one uh, one case is uh, about, uh, for example, use a Monte Carlo uh, simulation to calculate, calculate the value of pi. Another thing is uh, to multiply it uh, two metrics for the client. I'm going to uh, demo this part, two part. And uh, in the middle side, this uh, we are going to have, a, uh, uh, we call it a session, ma session manager. For example, when we try to calculate the pi, we are going to uh, receive lots of tasks. And uh, this, we consider this, uh, uh, this one is a session. And in this session, you can con uh, we can continue to submit tasks until we think there are already enough tasks for us. <laughs> and in the system manager, we are also going to support several uh, scheduling policies, such as the first share and uh, data aware scheduling. Uh, in this, uh, based on this, uh, based on this algorithm, we are going to uh, make sure the session uh, share the results of the whole cluster. Yeah. On the on the right side, this is uh, about uh, uh, Flame Executor Manager. This, in this Executor Manager, it uh, uh, will start an uh, agent on 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 the on the worker node. And uh, in this one, currently, it we are using the uh, uh, we integrate with the Kubernetes. As uh, this means, where each Executor Manager is a uh, uh, start. start We'll start. Uh, we'll start in the pod. And for the application service, this is a 
a uh, different service. For example, we are going to have a pie service or the matrix service. So they are going to execute the work of each task. And uh, to support different, uh, you know, for, to support different language and a different scenario, we are going to support a different scheme. Does it mean, for example, for STDIO scheme, this, this will uh, use a standard input and output to exchange data with the application service. And we also currently we also support uh, 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 WSM theme. This means uh, we are going to use the WSM application uh, WSM to uh, to build an application and uh, execute it in the uh, uh, executor manager. Uh, the R gRPC gRPC stream and the other stream is uh, working in the progress for now. On the on the bottom, uh, we will, uh, we are going to have a flame operator. This means uh, this is used to start different uh, uh, system manager because the system, the configuration of system manager may be different. For example, they are going to use a different policy, use a different uh, uh, capability in the in the cluster. Another thing is a, a flame auto scaler. This means uh, it's used to you know. Uh, uh, to uh, adjust the pod of each system manager based on the results in the whole cluster. Uh, this part is uh, uh, our, our architect for now. Uh, and currently, we have a uh, flame system manager and execute manager in the uh, in the repo and uh, flame operator and uh, flame auto scaler is uh, is ongoing. <coughs> Klaus, uh, um, quick, yeah. quick, quick question before you move on. Um, yeah, sure. For the executor manager and those shims, uh, mm -hmm. does that does that mean that you're executing, say, the WASM directly in that pod that's running the manager? It's running like multiple multiple WASM executions in, inside that pod. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. So you're 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 not like offloading to a different runtime underneath. You're kind of just shimming it, shimming it yourself through there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. <laughs> and <clears throat> currently, uh, we uh, this is the core part of uh, Flame SDK. On the left side, this is a Flame client. It's uh, will it's uh, have some basic function here and the first one this is the flame connect we use this connect we use this function to connect to the station manager so we we will build build the connection between the client and the system manager the second one is that we are going to create a session a uh, session is uh, similar to the job the the difference is that uh, until we close the session we can continue to submit job as I want. For example, I I can submit uh, 100 tasks, 200 tasks at any time until until close the session. And the last, uh, <clears throat> so the, the second one, the third one is the wrong task. And that side we can keep call this the wrong task and we will put a call byte here. This call byte will receive the output from the frame service. This this part is handled by the flame, and before uh, when I consider everything is ready. For example, I get the callback from the all task, and I don't want to continue to use this this station. So in the client, we can close this station, and if there are no other work, for example, I don't want to create more station here. I just uh, call the disconnect, uh, at, uh, from the client side part. And on the right side is the major major callback of the service. The first one is the uh, on system intern. Uh, this means, for example, for the service, for the service is the uh, bound to the uh, start date for a specific session. This callback will uh, execute, and uh, in this on session intern callback, we will have a common data here. That means for this session for 
for all the tasks in this series, it will share the it will share the all these data during uh, during the execution. The second one is uh, on task invoke. In task invoke, it will uh, <coughs> will send the task input. In this callback, it will get uh, for example task number and uh, 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 task input, and then do the do the real job of this uh, this session, and return the output to the uh, to uh, to the flame. So flame will. Uh, transfer the data back to the client. The last one is on session view. For example, when the task is when there are no task for this session, the service will be uh, uh will be uh will ex exist will exit. So when it's uh, unbound from the session, we will uh the frame we will call the on session view. So you know, uh, this service. Uh, will uh, the, uh, this service can do some clear up work such as uh, for example clear up the com data if they we have some persist on the disk something like that and uh, the previous one is about the uh, the the core part of the flame SDK uh, I think there we are also uh, there are also something ongoing is that we would like to do some enhancement for Python, make make this is a, a really simple for us. Now the first one we we can see, hey, this is a flame that you need, and this will do the, uh, <coughs> will do the, we will do the connection, and we it will also create the uh, create a session for us. The second one is uh, we are going to have a. Uh, flame the service. I mean, in this function is a is a um, this function is a is a is a service. We are going to use this service to execute on invoke. Uh, and in Python, we 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 plan to use the bad code. That means we are going to transfer the for example function into the bad code. And in the service side, we will decide decide. Uh, to summarize the bad code and execute it. Oh, okay, sure. Any any question? Yeah. Steven. Yeah. yeah. Um, where where does a where does a developer use this SDK? Is that for developing the workloads uh, that the uh, kind of executor manager runs, or is this for interacting with the the service itself? Mm, uh, sorry. So, um, you mean the target user or how to deploy the deploy this uh, Python? Uh, sorry, de deploy the application. Either the either the Python or the or the Go SDK. I guess I'm just wondering mm -hmm. where, um, what the developer uses that for. Is that is that running in cluster? Is that for developing the workloads themselves? Um, Is that is that a is that a valid question? <laughs> yeah, is that a, is that to compose automation or what is it like? A, like what's what what would um, an end user do or for this SDK? Right. So what uh, or basically <laughs> orchestrate orchestrate the different different workloads and 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 like on their laptop or or, or somewhere else in in the cluster. Right. Is that your question? Yeah, right, exactly. Mm, <clears throat> I think there, there are two parts. Now, the first one is that uh, we will use, uh, this system generally deployed in a cluster. So for example, the server side on task invoke, this will be executed on, on in, in different, uh, uh, in, in several nodes. That's mean you can we can use a distribute this uh, we can use a several work to do uh, to calculate for example to do the multiply the matrix. Okay, so the client would execute in multiple places, distributed places, right? Yes, yes. This is a uh, for the service for the service side is uh, 
it's on the different node is uh, in a distributed system. On the left side, for the for this, for example, for the flame client, this uh, uh, this is a single node. It's a uh, it's a client just to submit for example submit one thousand task, and uh, on the right side it will uh dispatch this task to the you know maybe maybe one hundred task or oh, sorry one hundred node, and they will do that uh, parallel to speed up the calculation. Okay, so the client is just a single single invocation, right? So and then yes, okay, but then the, so that that client runs where 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 does it run? Does it run on the on a Kubernetes node or or it can run anywhere? Um, anywhere, anywhere. Just make sure you can connect to the system system manager. Does that answer your question, Steve? Okay, yeah. So the the client then is is really the client side, like an end user that is making calls to that session manager. Yeah. And then the, the right side is is really the, is the same user writing the server side component, the same developer? Mm, maybe not. For example, on the right side, uh, you, we, uh, if someone already build something like that, build this, uh, 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 you know, build another service based on this application, you can just reuse this one. Currently we can, uh, uh, currently we put this uh, in local, uh, in local port, but uh, uh, we have a feature that we are going to download from the internet. For example, if we have the uh, Watson uh, binary, so we just put a URL, URL here and uh, the, Execution manager will download it for you and then execute this uh, the application. So what you, what we need to uh, for the client, it, uh, he just need to make sure the data what data is uh, matched. For example, when they submit, for example, for the multi uh, multiply metrics service, they just need to know follow the follow the input output. For the for the for the service side, that's enough. Okay, so you you can almost have like re reusable server side um, yes pre written tasks and pre written binaries related to that that, yes. that any client could execute. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So for for Python SDK part, as uh, this part is ongoing. Currently, we focus on the core part. Uh, but uh, you know, for for the Python, it's uh, just a wrapper of the core part. We are going to reuse the most of them. Yeah, the following is some you know some detail about the about the frame system manager and uh, its culture. For example, in this system manager, we are going to get a request for our client and uh, persist uh, to the persist the data to the CQ, circulate or postal grace. Currently, we uh, support the circulate for now for the HA. And uh, we, uh, we also have a scheduler to, you know, to do the, to, to, to do the scheduling. For example, uh, allocate the results for the, for the execution, dispatch task, and do the preemption, something like that. For the backend thread, it will talk with the executor manager you know, to send the task and receive and then retrieve the task output from the execution manager to make sure that they can work together. Yeah. Uh, this part is about the uh, execute, execute manager. So on the left side, uh, as uh, you know, in the previous uh, page, it will talk with the system manager and to, for example, to get a task for this uh, execution executor manager right now and also you know talk with the system manager to return the output currently all the output will run through the uh, system manager and uh, executor manager so we also have some uh, pipeline feature to use the uh, uh, share the cache or dis distribute the cache for to speed up the, the whole workload now in execution 
execute manager, we are going to have a different shame to uh, for different uh, application. For example, we have uh, standard uh, input output. We have log. This is just used for uh, for uh, for debug. Uh, and we also have Watson and the JVC is uh, is ongoing. But uh, generally, the application the callback to the application is just uh, for example on session enter on task invoke and you know, on session leave. This uh, this is what we can uh, this is what we what we defined for the application part. Okay, I'm going to uh do some demo for the uh based on this one. Now the first one I think this is a uh, uh, Monte Carlo uh, uh calculate the pi value based on the Monte Carlo. I think the 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 uh, the major idea is uh, it's a uh, it's a simple. The the thing is that for example in this uh, in this arrow when we are going to generate lots of red lots of points randomly. And we will use the number of port as a arrow. For example, if the point to the uh, belong to this circle, it will, you know, we can know we can uh, evaluate the arrow of the circle. And then we also know the square of the, the the error of this crowd of uh of this one, so we will calculate the pi based on this uh, this formula to get the uh, to get the uh, to get the value of pi. So I'm going to have a okay. So oh, can you see my terminal? Oh, are you sure? Yeah, I'm trying to understand the mm -hmm. problem, right? So you're uh, basically, you're calculating this formula in, in, in a distributed way, yeah. the result, okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, let me show you. Can, can you see my uh, console? This is, I'm not sure I'm sharing no. the- No, we can see I, only the presentation, so. Yeah. Only the presentation? Okay, yeah. let me show you. Sorry, let me reshare my screen now and uh, Sure. Okay. Let me share my whole screen. No worries. Okay. How about this time? Yep. Okay. Let's go. So I set up a, a mini cube in my cluster and in the. Hello? Yep. Okay. Not sure what's the problem to this environment. Wait a second. Okay. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I set up a mini coop in my environment, but uh, it doesn't matter. So we can build several pod, you know, in the real world. In this case, I start a uh, one station manager here. This uh you know three days ago we are going to have one system system manager. This is a you know single point. It, it will do the scheduling part. The second one we are going to have currently we deploy the three executor manager. For each executor manager, it will try to get the task from the uh from the system manager. And uh, if someone you know someone submit a task, so. During our example, it will you know all of them are do the do the calculator parallel, and uh, for the for this one is just a console for us to a, a client in Kubernetes so we can do the we can submit work submit task submit uh, the create a session something like that. So let me show how we are going to. Mm -hmm. What's the problem? <clears throat> S 
seem to understand something. OK. So in this case, there, uh, for example, we have, I have a command line, which will, we can use this one to list the session. We use the, you know, we have, uh, I'm running before. In this case, for, for example, we have, I have, a, for the more command line to, you know, already build the, the client in our site. So when I execute this one, this means it will, for example, this is the, we have, oh, sorry. We have another thing. In this case, we submit, for example, 100 tasks. In each task, it should, you know, the each, uh, each task may be executed by any of the executor. It's uh, handled by three of them to calculate the, the data. And then we follow the, uh, follow, follow the uh, volume to calculate the pi for, for our site. And for example, for each task, for example, we can, uh, oh, I'm not sure what's the problem to this environment. Never mind. <clears throat> so that's mean in this task, we have, we submit 100 tasks. And this in each, in each one, in each executor, it will receive part of them to execute. Then we have three executor manager here. And we can, you know, we can uh, let me show the log of this one. Oh, sorry, we can just a uh, cool. So as you see, we can see that they are going to task, going to session, different session and for the different task for this one. For example, this is a session two and session three. This is something like that. It so will going to invoke. And let me show part of code about the, this is, this example, or for example, for the, this is for the pi. For example, we are going to have a, in the client. This is the, what we executed, for example, executed the pi. Uh, we just, uh, you know, read the input here, read the input environment, something like that, and I call the connection here. And then we will create the session. And we have a, and then we just submit task. This is a submit task run. And then we're waiting for all tasks to be ready. Yeah, during the task run, we have a callback function here. This function is, uh, I think this is, is this one is, uh, is here. For example, when the task on update, it will get the task output from the, you know, from the, uh, from the service side. This is a task output for us. And if we, if we got, got some error, we will print error part. And this is just the client. So we, we have input, we submit the task, and then we just, uh, you know, get the output from the, uh, from the remote. And for the service side, it's only focused on, you know, how to calculate the part of them. It's for example, in this man function, it will generate a random, uh, random part and the read the input for example, how many, you know, how many piece of this one we are going to handle. In this case, I generate the default number is a, a 100. And then it will, you know, calculate this one. For example, if this one belong is a less than one, this means we are going to just add the summary of one. This means how many ports belong to the 
belong to the circle, and then we print out the put. This is uh, only focus on this part. And it, each executor will will using this one. We'll using this uh, this service, so you know it will run their parallel. Yeah, and another thing is that uh, currently we can also, this is only for the Rust client. Another thing is that we, uh, we can do something similar is to use the Python client. This also use, uh, you know, do some connection, create a session, and uh, summary the input, and then submit a task. And the circle is that we just uh, get the, you know, get the input of this one. Oh, sorry, this this is a callback to get the task output. And then we calculate the pi based on the volume. What uh, volume? This is a you know this is a for the for the Python one. This one can talk with the service of Rust because the, the input output we only care about the data instead of language. So this is a for yeah. Uh, yeah, so you you actually need a a client and a service for every every problem that you're trying to solve, right? So so yeah. yeah. So you calculate a pi here, but then this is a very simple problem, but you may have a lot uh, of different calculations that you may want to do, and then for that you also need to write your own server, right? Yes, yes. For the server side, that's we only in in the uh in the flame. It only care about the input and output, and it will manage the service for you, so you can do everything yourself. You can, you know, do everything in this in this logic, and just make sure that they can, you know, they can do that parallel to speed up your work. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh. I think uh, I'm going to share the second demo about uh, you know matrix multiplication. So you know for the how to multiply the different matrix that's been we're going to have two matrix, and then for example for this one it's uh, belong to this uh, uh this row and uh, multiply this uh, column of the matrix B was so, and then we get this uh, this item of this one. And uh, <clears throat> in this case, we have, uh, you know, we, for, for, in our case, we only have uh, three as culture. So in, in any time their maximum is that they're, go they're going to be three tasks as killed parallel. For, for example, each task will need uh, the, this two, Matrix. So we have a feature that we only send this two matrix one time. So this means we are in on in in the on session enter callback. We will persist this common data, and this will execute only once. After that, in the on in the uh, uh task on task invoke, we only use this data. So we don't need to, you know, transfer this data every time. There's gonna be save lots of time for us. Uh, I'm going to do some show about the matrix. Yes, we have a size. So the size is a requirement. That means how many uh, the size of uh, the size of matrix. Sorry, for example, we're going to have five. So this this is the two matrix. So we, then this is the output for each one. For example, this one is a we are going to have to column uh, the the first one and to the second the the second uh, column. So this is a one task. And all this, each point will going to uh, will will belong to a task to calculate each item for this uh, for this result. So if we do everything in the locally, that's gonna be uh, you know huge effort. But if we can do that, 
parallel based on the, you know, if we have a large cluster to calculate, that's going to be easy for us to do that. Uh, let me show some part of the matrix code. Yeah, so so that client is basically yeah. submitting it to the server to, to do the, all yeah. the calculations in parallel, save all your, yeah. you can't, can't do that on your laptop, basically. Let's, let's offload it. Yes, 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 you can. So for the client, I think this is a really simple. So for example, for the client, I just, you know, uh, submit a task, submit the input, everything, you know, the heavy workload, heavy uh, calculation is on the, uh, is on the cluster. So in this case, we just, uh, you know, generate random cluster for us, uh, two metrics for us. And then it will, you know, still do the connection. And uh, this is the print printed the two logs that we can just, you know, this one is the way are going to have a common data. We, you know, after we process this uh, uh, two metrics into a common data for this one. And the other one is uh, just probably the print information for us. And then I'm going to create a session and the common data is here. Let's use to, you know, uh, to share the data between the different tasks. And then it's a uh, continue just, uh, you know, Summit run this task, and then we are going to join all, and you know, and in the information, it will get the get the information. So this is the information here. Inform informer, it will get the task output. Uh, this output, uh, we know this which task output, so we know, you know, we just use the task ID here to make it simple, so we know, uh the value and which the uh, which the item of the result uh, uh, result matrix for for this one so you know this is a simple part just uh, send the task and get the result of each one and in the service side currently we use we build this matrix by the Watson so it's use the lab and we have matrix data so we can see that on the session enter we have a common data and uh, we will process this common data into the uh, into this uh, data data ptr that means is a you know a local this one this is the local uh, process the data for us it's going to you know uh, get just the process data in a cache and uh, on when we execute on session invoke, we know we will get this data. This is the, you know, every task will retrieve this data because so we don't need to transfer the, this two huge metrics for every task. So this is going to be make it simple. And uh, and <clears throat> I think this part uh, here is the, the highway one. So we are going to Went through the task and do the calculation and for all this all this part. This part is uh, you know calculate the item of uh, of each uh, of each uh, sorry each item of the result uh, matrix. Uh, yes, yes, has to. So hi. So where does the Wasm part come in, or is is this server side basically compiled to Wasm? Mm, sorry. How, uh, we, you talked about the the execution manager, and it's it's using mm -hmm. shims to execute the server side code. Mm -hmm. Is is this server code, uh, like pre compiled to the the Wasm and then pulled down at execution time, uh, or where where does the the shim and the execution come in to play here with this server? Uh. The binary should be pre-compared, mm -hmm. and uh, yes, uh, and in this example, it I just put it uh, into the pod, and uh, we have a we 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 plan to have a feature to support download from the internet. Mm -hmm. Yes, so the execution for example, the execution manager will download the Watson binary first day and then load it on the shim into the shame and do the execution. So 
uh, in the oh sorry, this is a session manager. This this one in the execution manager we have a uh, we have shim and we have Watson shim. Uh, mm -hmm. here is this one. This is the Watson. I think is the Watson executor. We build the engine. Uh, engine and uh, you know find the instance and then we call back of this uh, binary in our you know, in sure. our executor manager for the download part uh, uh, we we will you know support the internet download so when you when we deploy something you just need to you know uh, submit the uh, configuration file and then the system manager will download the binary for you and then you can just uh, execute it cool cool uh so for for this particular demo with uh, the matrix mm -hmm. server mm -hmm. how, how does it know which shim to use or how do you configure that uh currently as uh currently we use the configuration here and mm -hmm. uh, let me show um da, 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 da. i think this one Uh, currently, we use something this one, something like this one. This is a configuration file, and gotcha. uh, for them, yeah, we have metrics. And when we submit, we will define which application we are going to use, and this which shim we are going to use. For them, for Pi, I'm using the standard uh, input and output. For the metrics, I'm going to use the Watson, and this is a binary we are going to use for you know to uh for for this binary matrix binary and as i said we're going to also support you know download from internet and currently this is a um, a kind of a, a configuration file and we also have a issue uh issue that we are going to you know support uh we to do the re register Something, for example, we just apply a application configuration file, and for the client, you can decide which application you are going to use. For in and then in the application, we can decide which stream we are going to use, which binary we are going to download. All those things about the application part. Currently, it's using the configuration file, but in future, we are going to, uh, you know, <clears throat> we can we can uh do the registry registry. By the by the command line to you know, to make it simple for the for the end user. Sure. Okay. So so yeah, you um you can do a more uh in the future do like a, a registration procedure through the client. I I wonder if you've considered like a custom resource or something for these configurations from for a particular application so it can be more dynamic and applied like to the clusters. Uh. Uh, you mean the resource requirement? Uh, like how, how you configure a matrix to be the shim and WASM, um, doing that through like a config record in Kubernetes, for example. Like to, to in, inform Flame at, at runtime, uh, apply a config to the cluster for your particular app. Mm, I'm not sure which one. Okay, I'll give some example. Um, yeah, I, I guess I'm just wondering if you would consider like a like a CRD um for your application definitions to, to tell Flame um rather than having a, a static config file or, or require a CLI. Like so if you're doing like a I don't know, like a like a GitOps based application workflow that you're applying your config to your cluster. Mm -hmm. does, does, that, does, that make, does that make sense? Maybe, maybe because uh, for the system manager, it's uh, currently it's uh, uh, it will process data on the uh, into the database. Uh, this is this is a part. So this is not only for the CRD something like that. But uh, for for example, how to deploy the uh, Flame Manager, for example, System Manager, and how many executor, uh, executor manager for the one that's mean how many executor we are going to start. Uh, this part we are going to have an operator 
and uh, mm -hmm. you know uh, auto scaler based on the workload of the system manager we are going to do that this part definitely need the you know integration with the we, we are going to create the crd and integrate with the kubernetes part but for the for the application this uh, uh this is the only focus on the uh you know it's a it's a, it's a kind of internal uh, data structure so currently we may not use a crd for that part okay it makes sense i think it, i mean it uh it's a yeah. different way of specifying configuration i guess uh, with a crd yes yes yeah uh yeah and we also have several pipelines for us for example at this slide we have uh, we're going to support uh grpc stream so you know we it's going to be simple for some others for example currently we have uh, uh standard uh, input output and we also have the uh, Watson, but uh, for for them for R for some other language, if they didn't support well, we would like to support the gRPC, or maybe others for this one. And uh, another thing is that we also going to support the distributed uh, storage for data. As we said, as as in the demo, uh, as in the matrix demo, we have a. Uh, uh, we're going to transfer the data through the system manager, for example, the two metrics. Uh, if we consider the training case, AI training case, that's uh, going to be a challenge for the system manager. So we need to have some uh, distribute distribute the storage for the data. So we are going to make it easy for us to share. And uh, another thing is that in currently I only demos demos the pi and the uh, matrix multiply. Uh, I'm going to, uh, another another example is ongoing for the di distributed uh, training for TensorFlow and PyTorch. And uh, uh, in the future, I'm going to, you know, provide the example of these two uh, integration with these two part. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, so I think you have a, uh, a demo on PyTorch and in your code, I saw it. So do, is that currently? Uh, uh, no, it's not full ready because oh, it's not ready. Uh, we, okay. yes, yeah. it's not ready right now. I think this is a draft version to what we are going to do right now. And in future, we, uh, we are going to demo it by the based on, you know, based on more integration with this. Uh, this demo, this example is just a um, how to say, uh, mm -hmm. has. Uh, per pay touch, it's uh, we didn't finish the integration right now. A question that I, uh, related to this mm -hmm. is that there there are already uh, several distributed training projects. Uh, Kubeflow has one. There's mm -hmm. other projects I have. Uh, will this uh, project actually aim to integrate with like things like Kubeflow or? Uh, at the same time, provides something different from the existing uh, distributed training projects or offerings from from those uh, systems like Qflow, MLflow, and so forth. Um, I think this one can work together with the Qflow. For example, for Qflow, we have different operator and uh, something enhancement. And this part, this uh, framework is uh, similar to MPI, just uh, to you know to speed speed up the PyTorch. We trying to speed up PyTorch and the TensorFlow. For so when for example when we talking about the training operator in the cool flow, we can run the PyTorch with the flame and uh, you know speed up PyTorch training workload. And for the uh, training operator in cool flow. It will focus on, for example, create the pod and check the status and uh, also integrate with the, uh, you know, how to start the different, uh, uh, the pod for the, for the, uh, start the pod for the, for the PyTorch and the frame to do that. So currently we, uh, this frame can integrate with the, uh, with the workflow, this, uh, Mm, I think there's a, a can be a different layer. For so, example, for Python, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, it sounds like uh, this will be like an add-on enhancement and you will optimize some of the training. Uh, yeah. In a, in, yeah. In a machine learning pipeline. Yes, yeah. Sounds good, thanks. Yeah. And for the others, we're also going to have more uh, scheduling policies such as a priority and the data aware scheduling. Oh, sorry, this is a data aware scheduling. Currently in the upstream, uh, currently in the repo, I only provide the fair share part. And in the future, we are going to support more uh, scheduling policy here. And uh, we, <coughs> we're also going to integrate with uh, resource manager integrations such as Kubernetes. This is a major part we are going to do. For example, we are going to uh, have a, a flame auto scaler. So based on the workload or for based on the task and the session in the system manager, we are going to auto scale the uh, executor manager, make sure we have uh, enough executor to run the task and didn't, uh, you know, didn't increase the cost. Uh, this part is about uh, the auto scaler, and uh, there are also some myths such as the uh, CRI metrics dashboard, something that uh, we're going to do some enhancement later. Uh, the other one is a uh, flame operator. As I said, I currently I just uh, do the uh, start one system manager with a three executor manager. That's mean. Uh, I do that based based on uh based on the customer minds. If we want to deploy more, for the with more system manager with more cluster, uh, sorry with the more uh execution managers, that's gonna be uh take some time to do that. So if we have a flame operator, that's gonna be easy for us to deploy the uh, uh to deploy a flame cluster. Uh, the other thing is about uh, document, and uh, the other thing, another thing is about the security. We're going to support the TLS for all the connection. So, for example, between the client to the uh, be between the client with the uh, system manager and the system manager with the uh, executor manager. This uh, we didn't. This is just a, uh, you know, we we didn't uh, provide the, the <clears throat> we didn't provide the TLS for now. Mm, yeah, I think this is the um, uh, and this is a uh, example of this is a you know repo of the flame. Yeah, and there's some uh, more description about the Monte Carlo measure and the matrix multiplication in the wiki. And uh, in this one, in the flame repo, we also have the documents about. But more information about how we handle the uh, Python client, for example, from Monte Carlo, they're detailed about the blog. So if anyone have interest in this part, we can, you know, <clears throat> you, uh, you can just uh, dip, dump into this two blog. It will provide more details about our example. That's good. I think we're at the top of the hour, we'll just have one minute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think this is all from my side. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Klaus. Okay, my pleasure, yeah. Yeah, thanks and looking forward and we'll we'll see um, how this project evolves and hope to see it within the CNCF ecosystem too. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks all. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. bye.